Bird Bird. In this video, we're going to talk about the IBD uh, Diploma in Distilling Module 3 exam, which I recently took in June. So let's go! So the Module 3 was the most difficult, at least in my opinion, module to take. It was just very dry, boring stuff about the machinery, about utilities and equipment, and there was a lot of math equations in it, which was just not enjoyable. And I had a lot of problems studying for this exam, which I want to talk about. So first off, the IBD, it stands for the Institute of Brewing and Distilling. And so to earn a diploma in distilling, you have to pass three modules and all the exams for these modules take place in June. So if you wanted to, you could take all three modules at one time. Uh, they're on different days in June uh, and you could potentially pass all of them at once and I've heard people have done that before but I've just been doing it one module at a time so this was my third and last module that I did and actually you can take the modules in any order that you like but I just went one two three in chronological order so the first module it was about brewing it focused on mashing and fermentation. And the second one was about distilling and gin uh, and other products it kind of briefly touched on. But this third one was all about the process and instrumentation and equipment. And a couple of the problems uh, that I had was that the first off, you're given access to the learning material online, uh, which you read through. Um, and it was pretty expensive. I think it was... I'll have to look the price up. Okay, now we're on the IBD Diploma in Distilling webpage and you can see that in 2023 per module it costs 550 pounds to take. Uh, when I did it, it was 525 pounds per module. So the price has gone up a little bit. And also, they actually do have a tutor guided learning program where they have a tutor that teaches you live or helps you out live, and it's $1,296. And this is extremely expensive, I think prohibitively expensive for a lot of people, myself included. It's not something I would ever consider taking just because of how high the price is. The second thing I didn't like about it was all the math equations on it. And the reason was because they give you some worked examples that are online that you have to read and work through. Um, but the worked examples, I think a lot of times they would have the numbers in there, but they wouldn't write the units for the numbers. So you kind of couldn't, you couldn't see how the units cancelled out and it was just sort of here are the numbers in the equations and then finally there's an answer at the end and the answer magically has the units on it at that time. For math it's very important to show your work and see the units so you can understand how everything's working and for there to be no units all throughout the equation and then suddenly the units at the end uh, it just it made it a lot difficult more difficult to understand so that was a problem I had and also they gave you like 40 equations that you had to know uh, they don't give you an equation sheet on the exam so you don't really know what equation you're going to need to use and because there's so many equations it just it becomes really, really painful. Resource management. In this unit, we look at how to make the distillery more sustainable. We'll look at key risks and hazards in the industry. And we'll also look at um, the different approaches to maintenance that we can take within the distillery. Unit 2, Fluid Mechanics, we learn about how easily fluids move through the pipe systems and we discuss the density of the fluids, pressure, 
and how height impacts the movement of fluids in the pipe systems. This is where we start getting into the equations. Next is heat transfer. In the heat unit, we learn about how heat is transferred in a distillery at different stages, such as in the mash vessel, wart cooling, and in the stills. We also learn about the different mechanisms by which uh, heat is transferred, which are conduction, convection, and radiation. The third unit is Utilities Part 1, and this unit is focused on steam and refrigeration in the distillery. For steam, you'll learn how it's generated in a boiler and how to read a Muller diagram. For refrigerants, you'll learn about common primary and secondary refrigerants used in distilleries. In Utilities Part 2, You'll learn about the different classes of water in the distillery and the different stages of water treatment uh, based on what class of water it is. You'll also go over how effluent or waste is safely disposed of. Uh, you'll review the basics of electricity and also how CO2 is produced and recovered in the distillery. For unit six, this is process control and instrumentation. We'll go over different devices, uh, sensors, and instrumentation that's used to keep track of different distillery processes. Materials of construction. In this last unit, we'll go over materials used to construct equipment and supplies in the distillery. Uh, and these materials are classed as metals, non-metals, ceramics, and composite materials. We look at the different properties of these different materials and their disadvantages and advantages and how to use them hygienically or design them hygienically. I want to talk a little bit about how the exams are set up. So the IBD has moved to uh, have all the exams online now and it used to be in person but of course because of the pandemic they changed everything to online. So you have 3 hours and 15 minutes for the exam but you need to log in uh, 15 minutes prior to that so that you can connect to TestReach which is the service they use to host the online exams. So you'll sign in to test reach and then you'll have to get connected to an invigilator and they'll have to check your microphone um, and your audio to make sure they can hear you, you can hear them and also your camera just to make sure everything is working. And then when you sign in uh, and the invigilator is there, you have to take your laptop up and you'll spin your laptop 360 around the room so they can see that you're not cheating and there's no one else is in there and they might ask for you to put your camera down underneath the desk so they can see the floor and that you have no hidden study materials there um, and then what else do they ask you to do? You're allowed to bring two pieces of A4 white paper um, and a non-programmable calculator. And you also are going to need your phone with you actually. So they'll ask to see your ID, a government issued ID, and you'll need to have your phone so that you can take a picture of your laptop uh, just to, again to make sure you're not cheating in some way and then you'll have to show them the picture that you just took of your laptop um, and then after that you can start the exam there's a short answer section which is worth 40 marks and there's usually 30 questions uh, short answer questions there and then there's six potential essay questions that you can write about and you can pick four of those six um, that you choose to write about and each of those is worth 20. And the interesting thing about the exam is actually a passing grade is 45% so it's not even 50%. You basically need to fail in order to pass at 45%. 
but it, it was a difficult one, this one. Uh, if it had been another module, I wouldn't be as worried about it, but just because it was so dry. Like, I can't stress that enough. It was so dry, the material. That's my, that's my main gripe with it, is I didn't really see the relevancy of what was being taught. I felt like they were just teaching it or you were learning about it just to learn about it. And I, I didn't think it was very helpful in the day-to-day -day workings of a distillery. As you may have guessed, I did pass my module three exam. So I've officially earned my diploma in distilling. Yay! And I found out I passed in September with a D grade, so I just passed. Um, but only a couple of days ago, I received this quake in the mail. And it's a Scottish loving cup or a friendship cup. And you can see this cup has two handles on it. And they were nice enough to engrave my name in the center and write the year that I earned my diploma in distilling. So I'll show you that. I'm so thankful that all these exams are done with. I think while I was taking the IBD, I thought there was a lot of extraneous information that you don't really need to know as a working distiller. So actually I decided to create my own online course on distilling, combining my work experience as a distiller with all the information that I've learned from doing this IBD in distilling course and also from doing a diploma in brewing. So I've just launched the course. The course launched today, uh, which I'm very excited about. So please click on the link below to check out my basics of distillation course. Um, and this course is for anyone that's just interested in the science of distilling alcohol or of working as a distiller. And it's on sale now for a limited time. So I'd be very grateful if you checked out my new course. In the meantime, if you could give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button for more videos about brewing and distilling. This is Brewbird, sending good vibes your way. I'll see you next time.